All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see who can see me. <laughs> hey, you guys, can y'all see and hear me? I think I'm here. I think I'm live. Let me know if y'all can see me, honey. I'm here. Oh, we already got super chats and everything. How is everybody doing today? I'm hitting them with the fuchsia wig. Wanted to switch it up. I wanted some color. I haven't worn no color this summer. So I want to wear some color today before summer ends because I haven't been anywhere. Hey, you guys. <laughs> you guys like the color? Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, let me read these super chats real quick. Um, Angelique, uh, Angelique D, thank you for the $20 super chat. I appreciate it. Um, BL Sherelle says, damn, I'm going to miss the live because I got to go. Uh, but showing you some love. Love you, T. Love you, too. Thank you for stopping through. I appreciate it. How are you guys doing? Oh, we got a lot of people in here. We're going to wait till at least it gets to 1,000, honey. Good. Oh, shit. I said 1,000. It jumped up to 1,300. Okay. All right. So everybody's here. It's a lot to talk about. Um, it's been a crazy few days. Hold up now. Why is my MacBook... Charger not charging. Hold on, y'all, because I don't want the computer to cut off while I'm online. Okay. Plug it in. All right, I'm back. I don't want no issues. I don't want this shit crashing because um, the new MacBooks, they have horrible battery life. So I seen that it wasn't charging, so it's charging now. Um, Let's see here. I love you too, Cassandra Gant. Thank you for coming through, sis. Appreciate it. Um, Amazing Girl 12 says, Camille's Corner, hella caught out. Don't bring up other people's names in my channel. Thank you. I, I mess with Camille's Corner, but don't bring drama to my channel um, because with other YouTubers' names, because then y'all twist it and be like, Lovely T said. So uh, again, do not bring up other YouTubers in my chat. That's been a rule for the past two months. Because people lied and started a bunch of mess with another YouTuber that I wasn't even speaking on. Um, so anyways, yes, we have over 3,000 people in the house. Thank y'all so much. Um, Drea Hun says, I was listening to your podcast and I was like, T needs to go live. Then you blessed us. Thank you so much. I really enjoy doing the podcast and I'm going to keep it up. I know some people get mad because I only put, you know, I put a small, you know, I give you a small taste on YouTube. Then you got to go to the podcast because, like I said, I eventually want to transition to podcasting more full time. I really enjoy it. There's a bit more freedom. So we'll see how that goes. Um, Dina Sutton Echo says Lauren Hill owes me for skipping out on her Baltimore concert. Honey, Lauren Hill owes everybody. She's been late. I mean, she's always late to her concerts. I've called her out, out about that over the years. So thank you for the super chat. Um, Romella Estrada says, I love the pink hair. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Melane Pataki says, once again, you decide to go live and I'm working. LOL, I love your content. You've been watching since 2011. Keep being blessed. Stay. Keep being you and stay blessed. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And thanks for the support. Um, so we got over 4,000 people in here. I'm so glad you guys like the podcast. The only reason why when I do the podcast solo, cause somebody said, can you make it longer? It's hard. It's hard to talk to yourself for an hour. You know what I'm saying? The most you can get out of my podcast, the most you can just talk to yourself about shit is about 30 minutes. The podcasts that tend to be an hour or two are when people are having dialogue with other people. So like when me and my homeboy did the podcast, it was, I mean, the hour went by so fast. So that's what I want to do more of. I just got to, you know, there's, there's certain people I'm going to bring on and interview. So I'm just dealing with that right now, deciding who I want to interview next. And it just really depends. But yeah, if it's just me, it's going to be under 30 minutes. But if I have somebody else, it will definitely be an hour. So there'll be some longer podcasts coming. I just got to get the right people to come on to the show. So that's what that's about. So thank you guys. So I want to go on here and talk about all this stuff. Honey, that WAP song is causing tons of controversy, tons of drama. And CeeLo Green had a lot to say about it the other day. 
Um, he did an interview. So I want to go ahead and talk about that. And let me see here. Pull up my notes with everything that he said. He had a lot of opinions. Honey, I went on a blocky honor was in effect on Instagram. So if you got blocked on Instagram, do not come here. Time out. You want to be unblocked and it was an accident. Absolutely not. My issue is this. Okay. You don't have to be a fan of Cardi B. You don't have to like anything about her. But at the end of the day, when I post stuff on my page, I post stuff on my page. That, that's my page. And what you're not going to do is come on my page and lie. Now, I believe I was one of the only so-called bloggers that pointed out all the young girls who were on TikTok dancing to WAP. Put a teacup, if you remember me talking about this over the weekend, because people were sending me all the TikTok videos. I told y'all that young girls would be emulating the dances and talking about their wet, wet. Everybody was like, oh, no, it's an adult song. Kids won't. And they did. I didn't see any other, other bloggers. I didn't see Hollywood Unlock, Shade Room, nobody else pointing that out. So then when I post a picture of her today, and I said, I do like the picture. I like her makeup. I didn't, you know, but that's what I really liked about the picture, the overall look. Do you think I'm stupid enough where when I talked about the WAP video, I talked about symbolism? Do you think I don't see the symbolism on certain pictures that not just her, but celebrities take? At the end of the day, my Instagram and my YouTube channel is not a, a conspiracy channel. It's not a symbolism channel. At the, at the basic, this is a celebrity news and gossip channel. And stop trying to make it what it's not. Every time I post something, I don't have to point out the, symbol, the symbology. If you see it, great. But don't accuse me and say that, oh, you're ignoring the symbolism here when I literally made a whole post about young girls dancing to the WAP song. When nobody else pointed that out. So don't ever say that I'm being hypocritical in one stance because I don't want to point out the symbolism in a picture. So by that logic, should I point out every time LeBron James throws up the 666 when he steps out on the court? Should I pull, should I pull up every time a celebrity takes a picture and they're covering their eye or they're doing something? We all know it's there. What do y'all want me to do about it? So complaining will get you nowhere but blocked. Thank you. So, like I said, yes, the, the symbolism is everywhere, but I'm not going to sit here and point out, like, every single thing. By that logic, every time I post a celebrity magazine cover, I should be doing a checklist on what symbolisms are. You know, so, you, honey, I ain't got time. So let's go ahead and, and talk about, thank you to everybody in here. Because, um, like I said, people pick and choose. Because when I brought up the stuff about the WAP and the kids, oh, y'all was all here for it. And then the second I don't mention something, now it's an issue. I'm, I'm not going to mention stuff every single time. You should have enough common sense to know that I see what I see. But um, so CeeLo Green decided to go on a rant. He did an interview, actually. And he talked about the WAP music video. The WAP music video has a lot of people feeling a certain way. I know the Breakfast Club talked about it the other day, about a lot of the backlash. Um, ben Shapiro, who is a conservative, a conservative YouTuber, even talked about it. And Cardi B basically, you know, low-key, not called him out, but she commented on it, okay? So let me go ahead and read to you guys um, what CeeLo Green had to say. I wrote all the notes down. So CeeLo Green says... He, this is his interview with Far Out. He says, there was once a time when we were savvy enough to code certain things. We would express to those, hold on. We would express to those it was meant for with a style of language that we used. But now music is shameless. It's sheer savagery. We are adults and there should be a time and place for adult content. As adults and artists, we should at least attempt to be each other's accountable partner in regards. The stereotypes that are celebrated and perpetuated ultimately make the perception a reality. It is disfranchising and it has caused a great deal of problems. 
you have the head of state, Nicki Man, you have the head of state like Nicki Minaj or someone who's up there in accolades, success, visibility, a platform to influence. Nicki, Nicki could be so effective in so many more constructive ways, but it feels desperate. Attention is also drug and competition is around. Cardi B and Megan the Stallion, they all are more or less doing the same salacious gesturing to, to kind of get into position. I get it. The independent woman and being in control of the, define, of the divine feminine and sexual expression, I get it, but at what cost? Okay? So that is what CeeLo Green had to say. I, I definitely get where he's coming from. You know, I see a lot of people upset. I definitely get what he's, where he's coming from with that. He made a lot of good points. He said shit that I've said. Look, I said, I don't, I don't owe anybody anything. I'm going to state what's on my mind. Okay, he made a lot of good points. Great message, CeeLo. Wrong messenger. Okay? Just like I said with other people that I've caught out. Great message. Wrong damn messenger. My issue with CeeLo is this. CeeLo Green has also made money talking and doing low vibrational shit, using women as props and sexual objects in his videos. Um, even recently, I believe it was like in 2012 or something, they said that he had slipped an ecstasy pill in a woman's drink and admitted to having sex with her, and the woman couldn't even remember the sexual act. She couldn't remember it. And he ended up going to trial for that. Now, he was found not guilty, but let's not act like, you know, his, his background is squeaky clean as well, okay? So I also want to go ahead and play you guys what Ben Shapiro had to say. Because it was, like I said, everybody has something to say about this video. So give me just a second to pull up this display. Give me just a minute here. Okay, good. It's in the right position. So y'all, this dude is such, oh my gosh, he's weird. Make sure starts and he's just reading some of the lyrics, but it's so damn funny. <laughs> whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. There's some whores in this house. Hold up. I said certified freak seven days a week. Wet ass P word. Make that pullout game weak. Yeah, you effing with some wet ass P word. P word is female genitalia. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet ass P word. Give me everything you got for this wet ass P word. Beat it up, N-word. Catch a charge. Extra large and extra hard. Put this P-word right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. Hop on top, I want to ride. I do a Kegel while well, it's inside. Spit in my mouth, look in my eyes. This P-word is wet. Come take a dive. And continue. Okay, I don't want to keep playing it. Dude is bugging. So this is what Cardi said. Cardi says, I can't believe conservatives are so mad about WAP. Like, he ended up trending number two in the political sector of Twitter. It was crazy, right? So, um, that was Ben Shapiro. <laughs> I'm sorry. That shit was funny as hell, the way he was reading it. So, this is my thing. Now, I get the controversy. I get the drama behind it. The song is very sexual. But what I've noticed is that people are very upset with this song. They're not keeping the same energy, okay? For the past, I mean... Let's just talk about the new artists. We're going to talk about the new artists for now. For the past five or six years, this is all a lot of the major mainstream new artists have been talking about. Wet ass coochie, tight coochie, selling coochie, getting, you know, a bag with the coochie, not letting broke dudes hit the coochie. Like, let, let's keep it real. Like this, this, this like vulgar rap has been around for a while now. Okay. But for some reason, when it comes to Cardi and all these women, they're definitely getting the brunt of the backlash, okay? Now, like I always said, people are grown. They're free to talk about and rap about whatever they want to. At the end of the day, it's on the consumer. If you find it disgusting, if you find it tacky, don't listen to it. Don't download it. Don't support it. At the end of the day, the only people that we control is ourselves, OK, and we have to be aware enough to know that, you know, there's going to be certain messages in music, certain imagery. And if it doesn't gel well with you, or if you don't want your children being exposed to it, then you have to be a parent. When I see young little girls who are like between the ages of 12 and 13 dancing, talking about their wet, wet 
And especially when we have, you know, serious things going on like P-Gate. At that point, I got to give the parents the side eye. It's not Cardi, Kylie, or any of those people's job to raise my child. Just like it's not XXX, Drake, Little Yachty, um, Little Uzi Vert, or any of those male rappers' jobs to raise my sons. It's our jobs as parents. So if the little girls are bold enough to sit online and dance to a song like that and upload it, there was already something going on in that household. Because when you set a certain precedence in your household, your child is not going to do something like that. Now, with that being said, we also had stuff like this back when we were kids. And I saw a lot of people saying, um, who is that Deontay Taylor? <laughs> he had me cracking up because you know the whole thing with TikTok. It's a lot of young people on there. So whenever you point out anything sexual, like y'all need to be in, you know, you need to be in a child's place. Y'all kids shouldn't be dancing to this. She shouldn't be rapping to this. Then you get these kids who type in like, you know, capital letter, little letter, capital letter, you know, that, that bullshit font. And they're like, you shouldn't be looking at us like that anyways. And it's like, little girl, sorry to break it to you, but you don't control how people receive your message. And if you're sitting there at 12 in a halter top and some damn biking shorts and you're talking about your wet, wet, I may be able to look at them and be like, you know what? You need to go sit your ass down. But the pedo is possibly, you know what I'm saying, to your video. So you typing in little caps and big caps, that doesn't negate the fact. Okay? And, and the difference is this. Let me also say this. Because I saw a lot of people leaving comments. Oh, well, we were dancing, uh, you know, my neck. My bad, foot my, uh, and my crack. And we were, you know, talking about making a Sprite can disappear in our mouths. Yes, we were rapping to these ratchet songs, not realizing, okay? We were rapping all that stuff. But the difference is we didn't have social media. So even if you were rapping and singing those adult songs and even dancing and twerking, because, you know, like a lot of, you know, in Caribbean, African cultures, Latina cultures, you know, we, we dance a certain way. You know, a lot of, you know, slow grinding and moving of the hips and, you know, all that stuff. But a lot of that stuff was not on social media. That was not stuff that could be attached to you four or five years from now. You get what I'm saying? So that is the difference between back then when we were growing up and now, now when you do stuff like that, you're exposing yourself to the entire world and you're exposing yourself to receive judgment and trolling and all types of stuff um, from the entire world. Whereas when we did it, it was just the people at the party. So that's the main difference. Let me go ahead and um, read some of these super chats here. Um... Ash North says, you are amazing. Thank you so much for the $20 super chat. I appreciate it. Um, Cherie, Cherise Everett says, yes, I made it to a live. Thank you for the $50 super chat, sis. Thanks for coming through. I appreciate it. Um, Ryan Charm says, I've been watching you for five years now. I love you, girl. You really be having me cracking up and thinking outside the box. I'm going to leave, Will. I'm going to leave, Will. I'm going to I'm a, I'm a leave. Well, y'all love when I do that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, Celicia Gordon sends 50. She says one of the only tea sippers I can listen to despise not knowing about half of the people you speak about, but may the Lord guide you and protect you always still haven't heard that WAP song yet. Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the support. So you know, so like I was saying, you know, it's, it's not these musicians' jobs to raise our children. It's our jobs. But what I also want to talk about is this, because I see a lot of people are very disingenuous online. And they're disingenuous depending on what they are a fan of, okay? Let, let's kind of go deep really quick. Because so many times we're in this whole... As soon as a man says something, he's misogynistic, we're just going to attack him. I get that. But I also got to say this. Music does play a part and a role in things that happen in society. Okay? And we can try and say that this is woman empowerment, and to some extent it is. You know, women are free to express themselves just like the men are free to, to express themselves as well. But let's not act like some of the music 
in hip hop culture has not been a detriment to the community. Okay. Let's not act as a child of the nineties. Tell me if I'm wrong. Cause we're going, we're going to go kind of deep here. Cause I hate how people like to be willfully ignorant and disingenuous depending on who the topic is about or depending on who says what. As a child of the 90s, let's not act like when gangster rap music did not come out, that it didn't change the whole vibe of the community. That we went from regular rap music to kids wanting to be gangbangers. The death toll in LA skyrocketed. Cities that never had gangs before had gangs. Crips, Bloods, GDs, Vice Lords. If you think Chicago's bad now, talk to people who were raised in Chicago in the 90s, who were from Cabrini Green, Robert Taylor Projects, and all those killings in the projects, and how many people still have PTSD from seeing bodies in the, in the, in the hallways. So rap has always, you know what I'm saying, there's always been that negative connotation in rap in general. It didn't start with Cardi B. It didn't start with Nicki Minaj. It started long before this. So the same way that music can overly sexualize children, which I agree with 100%, I'm not going to ignore that fact, okay? When I see 11 and 12 year olds dancing to that on TikTok, that's my proof right there. But that's the same way that the music was affecting kids that I grew up with in the 90s who got involved in gang banging. And I've talked about this in prior streams. I still got a homeboy. He went to prison when my oldest son was six months old. My oldest son is now 19 and he still has another 15 years. Okay. And a lot of that mentality was brought on by the music, the whole thug life mentality. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Tupac. Y'all know that. But do you think I'm about to ignore the fact that his music also ushered in that thug life and being a thug and being hard and, you know, popping off? So that's my thing. If we're going to have this conversation, we need to really have this conversation. If we're going to dwell deep, we need to really dwell deep. Because before there was ever a Cardi, before there was ever a WAP song, there was a little Kim who was talking about selling ass and, you know, making a Sprite can disappear in her, in her throat and, you know, taking provocative pictures with her coochie. You know what I'm saying? That, that picture where she's in the cheetah print and the legs are spread and all that stuff. Foxy Brown, the same thing. Shauna, the same thing. So there's always been an over-sexualization and violence in music. And does it affect the youth? Damn right it does. And anybody trying to ignore it and say, oh, this is just about misogyny? You're full of shit. Music does affect people. It can affect adults. It can affect children. So like I said, y'all do what y'all want to do. Listen to what y'all want to listen to. Support what y'all want to support. But folks need to keep the same energy. And let's not act like this just started in 2020. This has been damn near 30 years in the making. Okay? Let's not act like our faves like Jay-Z didn't get on by selling crack to the community. And bragging about it and making boys feel like they had to go out there and sell crack to make money. It's funny that once people get into their old age, all of a sudden they want to forget about the shit that happened in their generation and the stuff that they were involved in. Like I said, I haven't, CeeLo Green hasn't made that much conscious or inspirational music. So let's keep that real. I'm going to read these comments, honey. I'm preaching today. I'm just saying, if, we, if we're going to talk about it, let's have an honest conversation. Um, Let me see here. We got a lot of super chats. And sorry if I'm missing some of them. I apologize. Um, Live from NYC says, for myself, it's more about how they expected it to be just like based on explicitness and the suggestive video. There was no real energy or creativity this leads me to believe it's directed towards underage. All right. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. TJ says, did you see the video of the black man who helped rescue the traffic teen who rolled out the trunk in Lexington? She was taped up. Um, yeah, we did. I posted that on um, Instagram. So, yeah, we did see that. Thank you so much for the super chat, TJ. Um, let's see here. 
Uh, Tiana Kendrickson's 9999. Thank you so much for the super chat, sis. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Maya sent $100. Thank you, Maya. She says, I can't stay, but from what I see, you are definitely speaking facts. Thank you so much, sis, and thank you for the support. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Antonio sends 20. He says, hey, T, I love your content and that you always speak the truth. It's a double standard. Men in hip hop have been talking vulgar in their music since the 80s and 90s, yet they don't get the same backlash when women do it. Exactly. Exactly. We come from the era of two live crew. Okay. Um, Uncle Luke, who I have much respect for, because if it was not for Uncle Luke, fighting the Supreme, you know, the, the, the Supreme court and taking the whole, his whole case to the Supreme court to have, you know, freedom to say what he wanted to say on the record. A lot of y'all wouldn't have no damn career. Cause a lot of y'all can't rap without cussing every two damn seconds. Okay. So you can thank uncle Luke for that. But the reason why he, he fought it and went to the Supreme court, cause he wanted to be free to do what talk about bitches, fucking sucking and all that stuff. So yes, this goes deep. Ice T, exactly. Ice Cube, all of them. You know, so this this didn't start with these ladies, but for some reason, these ladies are being made the sacrificial, you know, sacrificial quote unquote lamb, where everybody wants to dissect their lyrics. But um, just a month before that, Takashi Six Nine, who's also bad for the community, who's also you know has a a crazy reputation of doing reckless stuff and influencing the youth, he dropped trolls with Nicki Minaj. In that song, you know, Nicki Minaj had lyrics in there that were sexual. I didn't see Ben Shapiro reading it. She, she says um, that part where she's like, yeah, eat it, cookie monster. He's a slave to this pee. Call me a master real wet. I said slipper like a pasta. That sounds very similar to WAP. So that's what I'm saying. All of these celebrities and female rappers, not all, but the, the majority, the mainstream ones, they all hit on the same topic, which is the P word. OK. So that's just that's just keeping it real. Um, Sam Rose says your hair and lip combo is stunning. Thank you, sis. <laughs> um, says thank you for all the hard work you do to provide the honest, unbiased tea. You have always kept it real much love. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Y'all know I have to like brush my hair. I hate I know I wear weed, but I've told y'all this before. I don't like the feeling of hair or like on my neck and stuff. Even when it's my real, honey, it could be my real hair. I've been known to pull out my real hair in my sleep by accident. I hate hair just being on me. So that's why I brush my shit all the time or touch it and move it. Be like, y'all, it's touching your hair. Cause I don't like hair on my skin like that. I don't know. I just don't like it. <laughs> um, Auntie Chase Hardy says, stop looking for these celebrities to be your children's role models. Y'all be them. Y'all be that for them. Amen. At the end of the day, y'all gave birth to these damn baby kids. Okay. Mine included. It is our job to raise ch the, the children. If you don't have them, you got to raise them, you know, and, and raise them in a, in a functional household with functioning parents and things like that. And it's too many kids nowadays being left to their own devices. Okay. This is no different. Remember that little boy? We got 10,000 people in here. Shout out to all 10,000 of y'all. Make sure y'all hit the like button, please. Remember when that little boy went viral the, uh, maybe like two, three months ago? And he was rapping. He was about 12 years old. Rapping about the ops and killing people and selling drugs. He had that fake ass gum wrapper on his teeth as, you know, as grills. And people were upset. Folks were dragging him. Oh, he's a little young black thug. Where's his book? You need to go read. Stop rapping. Where's his mom? Where's his... Oh, everybody was so concerned and dragging that young black man. And I said, no, absolutely not. Y'all would not drag the babies. I don't care if it's little girls twerking or young boys rapping about shooting and, and selling drugs. Absolutely not. Y'all would not drag the children before y'all drag the damn adults. He's not doing nothing different than what little Wayne was doing at that age. Rapping about the same shit. He's not doing nothing different than what your favorite male rappers are doing. He's emulating them. So if you're not going to hold Rick Ross to task, if you're not going to hold, you know, just whatever Meek Mill, Drake, just what, whatever rapper raps about crazy stuff, if you're not going to hold them to task, don't you dare hold this 11-year-old kid to task. All these children are doing is emulating what they see the adults do. 
And sadly, a lot of these damn adults are so busy following celebrities and trying to, you know, do, you know, live this lifestyle and act like they're on the same level with these celebrities that they're forgetting to parent their children. So you got the daddy out here rapping and saying the same junk lyrics. So why would you think that the child is not going to do it? So that's all I'm saying. Um, Monet L says, T.I., I appreciate you for being honest and real about how hip hop has been violent, raunchy and degrading since the 80s and 90s. You are a real one. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming through. You know, I'm going to always speak that real. People get mad, get upset. It, it makes me no difference. Like I tell everybody, if you don't like it, unsubscribe and exit stage left. You ain't got to come here again. You control yourself. You don't control me. I control myself. I don't control any artist out here. The only people that we control is ourselves. So if you don't like something, you remove yourself from the situation. So I'm going to always keep it real. Thank you so much. Um, Nana Nia, hey, sis. She says, as a child of the 90s, I agree with what you're saying. But as a parent of an eight-year-old being raised in the 2000s, ain't no way in hell. It's my job. Ain't no way in hell. It is my job to parent. I don't need no damn village to influence my kid. Amen. Amen. And that's the thing. You have to set boundaries. You know what I'm saying? It's not easy being a parent. There's no perfect parents, including myself. Shit, I had my son at a very young age. So it's just, you know, you're, you're, you're learning. Like, we kind of have to, like, raise each other to a, a, to a certain extent. So it's not easy at all. You know, but at the end of the day, you have to... You have to let them know that you're the parent. There's certain things that are acceptable and not acceptable. Like, I don't allow my kids to just post whatever picture they want to post on social media. I've been drilling that in them since they were young and they're boys. I don't want to see y'all on social media with no shirtless pics. Fully clothed only. Unless you're, like, unless you're at a beach, then that's different. But sitting in the mirror with your shirt off, tongue out, Rubbing down your nipples. Not in my household. And they don't post pictures like that. The only time you'll be shirtless if, it, if the environment calls for you to be shirtless. So again, if I had a, a, a daughter, it'd be the same thing. If you want to dance in your room and, and have fun, because kids are going to be kids. You can't just tell kids they can't dance and listen to certain. I was listening to all types of shit. Okay? Snoop Dogg, Warren G., Bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. Licks on the end sucks. The I knew that whole song by heart. And I was, what, 12, 13. It ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. We were little kids singing that shit, not even realizing what we were singing. It ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. It ain't no fun. You know what I mean? Guess who's back in the motherfucking house with two big up in your mouth. Hoes recognize, niggas do too. Yo, don't get me to rapping. Like, these songs are still embedded in my brain. Like, that's crazy. After all these years, I can still rap that shit. So who am I to, you know what I mean, to sit in front and act like this wasn't going on in my childhood? Snoop and them didn't give a damn about us because they're lyrics. And young boys thought it was okay. Once that music came out, we were all types of bitches. I remember being 11, 12 years old, getting caught bitch all the time. Oh, well, you know, I don't mean nothing by it. You know, the rappers say it. Well, don't call me a bitch. Oh, bitch, you tripping. That was us in the 90s. Am I lying? So I don't understand why in 2020 everybody's acting new. Honey, don't give me the rapping. It ain't no fun. The homies can't have no. <laughs> I mean, that song is still stuck in my head to this day. When I watched the, the versus battle with Snoop and DMX, I had a damn ball. Oh, that was probably one of the burst, the one of the best versus battles. And I haven't watched many, but I was here for it. Like that was my whole childhood. And as I'm rapping the I said, this was some vulgar ass lyrics. Murder was a case that they gave me. I mean, we knew all them words. Mm. But you know, that's life, honey. Let's see here. Uh, conjunction says, sis is woke, conscious, and real as fuck. I appreciate you. Fire in your hair is 
Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you as well. Thanks for coming through. Um, Scott Pierce says, Preach T, my parents would only let me listen to kids' bop version of those songs. I'm a certified geek to go to school five days a week. Ooh! <laughs> See, we didn't have no kids bop when we were growing up. Wasn't no kids bop, honey. Everything was raw and uncensored. And you know, it's so funny when I look at it. There was an old black woman. Y'all remember, if, if you're from the 90s, y'all will remember her. Who remembers Dolores C. Tucker? Put a teacup, 90s kids. If you remember Dolores C. Tucker. And hell, Pastor Calvin Butts. Oh, they used to keep their foot on hip-hop's neck. She kept her foot on Tupac's neck. He even talked about her in the song, Drugger. Kept her foot on Snoop Dogg's neck. Y'all remember Dolores C. Tucker? And basically, she would say that this music is vulgar. They would have a steamrolling parties where they would buy a bunch of Snoop Dogg, Tupac, NWA, Ice Cube, all that gangster rap music. They'd buy a bunch of CDs and tapes. And they would steamroll it. They have big, these big steamroller parties. And MTV would be there covering it. And Dolores C. Tucker, you know, God bless her soul, honey. She died many years ago. But she was always saying that this type of music is going to have a negative effect on the kids. But being that we were young, we didn't want to hear that shit. Oh, you're just old. You're hating. Leave Tupac alone. Leave Snoop Dogg alone. They can say whatever they want. It's, you know, freedom of speech. But now looking back 30 years, it's like, damn. And, and now that I'm older and I can look back on it, I can honestly say, like, shit, that music really did affect us. It really did. I got a bunch of dead friends behind that game banging music, friends doing damn near life in prison behind that music. So it really did take a toll on the community. So to just dismiss everything that he said, I'm not going to do that. I just feel like he's not the right messenger. But he made a lot of good points. But we can't just say that it's starting now in 2020. That's where people lose me when they act like this. This just, you know, everybody just woke up in 2020 and all of a sudden all this, all this vulgarity just landed in our laps. No, nah, it's been around. It's been around. I remember folks calling out Little Kim when she gone. I remember I, I posted old videos of when Little Kim would go on like the Ricky Lake show. You know what I'm saying? And people would call her out. And even Little Kim, she had did an interview one time with this black uh, TV host. And I forget her name. And it was this little girl, she was 12 years old, and she was like, you know, little Kim, you know, she was like the biggest little Kim fan. She was crying. And little Kim told her flat out, you know, I'm glad you're my fan, but my music is not for you. I don't want you out here having sex. I want you to stay in school. You know, she just gave her some like real, real advice. And that's the thing. All music is not for children, and we get that. But let's not be willfully ignorant and act like kids don't have access to the music. So again, it falls on the parents because the celebrities, they're here to get their damn check and take care of their families. Now, another thing I want to bring up, um, cause like I said, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I also don't like the opposite of that. Rolanda. Okay. Thanks you guys. I couldn't think of her name. Rolanda. That was the show that little Kim was on. Um, let me see here. Find the clip. So they all did an interview with Apple Music. And so this clip of Suki, Suki Han, I think that's her name, is going viral. Now, I don't know much about her. I've seen her a few times on Love and Hip Hop. I tune out because I'm just not into Love and Hip Hop like that. But she's talking, basically trying to defend the whole video. But then she says something that just kind of bothers me. So I'm going to go ahead and play that for you guys really quick. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Give me just a second here. Let me set all this stuff up. Okay. I feel like being like sexual and shit, like I don't see nothing wrong with that because baby, I got uh, uh, three kids. And I mean, <laughs> I got these kids from sucking and fucking. At the end of the day, me being a hoe, like these people say, like, honestly, I liberate a lot of a lot of hoes. You feel me? When I hear Cardi talk about popping some pussy, me and my bitches is witty. Like we that liberate us because it's like fuck you, self-respect as hoes, cause how y'all got self-respect? <laughs> like, I don't think y'all got self-respect like that. Cause first of all, you supposed to tax these niggas, that's self-respect. You feel me? Like, 
I just, it make me feel liberated. Like, I love crossing boundaries. Because guess what? Scared money don't make no money. If you're going to be scared to get that money, you're going to be scared to be yourself and say, this who I am, then you ain't going to get that coin like that. Thanks. Okay, first of all, let me get back on my screen, honey. Uh-oh, did I? Oh, hold on. Oh, there we go. First of all, ain't that Nadeska from that complex show with DJ Academics taught my facts? See, and that's the shit I don't like. That's why I don't get asked to interview people. Because we're going to have to have a real discussion. It's, you, you can't say what you just said. And then it's facts. And I'm surprised because Nadeska doesn't carry herself like that. And basically, she's low-key dissing your ass. What bothered me with that? One thing I've always said is, I really don't care too much what women do. There's different types of women. So we're not going to act like um, all women are saints. All women, you know, are school moms and dress a certain way. There's different types of women, okay? Just like I never understood when people talk shit about porn stars, but yet and still, everybody watches porn. Porn is one of the most watched things on the fucking planet. But then y'all would drag a porn star. Are you dragging them when you're jerking off? Probably not, okay? So there's different types of women out here. My thing is, that's cool to feel liberated. That's cool to, you know, claim your whole shit. That's your business, but then to turn around and say that you don't like respectable assholes? Why do women who carry themselves with what you want to call respect, why don't you like that? Why is that a bad thing? If me as a woman who does not carry myself like a Sukiyana, if I can still let her live and do her and not judge her, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, well, if that's how you want to carry yourself, that's on you. Because what you do doesn't really affect me like that, personally. Maybe globally, but not personally. Why is it that when a woman chooses to, to, to carry herself a certain way, why is that frowned upon by her? So I didn't agree with that. And the fact that Nadeska does not carry herself like that, like even in the, in the picture, Nadeska has on like a black shirt, you know? You don't see no cleavage. You know, you see mine, damn it. But you don't see none with hers. Why did you not take up for the respectable, for the respectable girls, Nadeska, and say, okay, well, I get what you're saying, and I can see your point when you want to talk about, you know, you're, you're here for the hoes and, you know, you liberate. I guess she's the, um, the damn Sojourner Truth of hoes. That's fine if that's your title and your moniker. You can, be the, you can be the Sojourner Truth of hoes. But there's also respectable women out here who carry themselves a certain way. And there's nothing wrong with that. That was the same thing I used to get on Aisha Curry about when she was always trying to talk shit about women who dress like, you know, Cardi or, you know, Instagram models. And she'd always throw shade. Oh, I like to cover up for my husband. I got a husband. I don't have to show off my titties. I have a husband. You see my ring? That's my husband. And it's like, bitch, shut up. We get it. Let them live their life. Okay? If, if, you're, the, if you're so happy in your three-piece suit and being a mom and a wife, then be happy. You don't have to knock other women. So this is the same energy I'm giving Suki. So you can't say I'm just saying it because of Suki. I've also drug Aisha Curry for trying to knock women like Suki. There's different types of women out here. And it's okay. We need to stop this whole, if it's a woman that I like, then I'm going to support it. But then if it's a woman or a personality trait that I don't like, then, you know, F that person. But then y'all will cry about men being misogynistic. Which one is it? There's room for everybody. There's nothing wrong with dressing sexy, okay? And every now and then I like to dress sexy too. But then I also will, you know, dress like a tomboy. You know what I mean? So it's like we can have, there's, there's many different fractions to us as women. We're multifaceted. It's not all one way. You can't tell me every day she's dressed like a fucking whore. I'm sure she's at home chilling and in pajamas and sweats and stuff like that too. So there's different parts to us. So I didn't like the fact that she thought it was okay to knock women that she says, you know, carry themselves with respect. Because if somebody says something against women who carry themselves like Suki, then you're slut shaming. Okay? So what I'm saying is folks need to keep the same energy. If we're not going to be out here slut shaming women, let's also not be out here disrespecting women who are more respectable, carry themselves a certain way. Some women would rather be freaky in the bedroom with their man. 
Other women want to show the whole world how freaky they get down to each its own. So that was my opinion on that. Yes, there has to be a, va uh, a balance. Look, uh, Cameron Scott says, Aisha's a whole hypocrite, though. Exactly. As soon as she lost that weight, what'd she do? Was she still walk running around in fucking, you know, turtlenecks and shit? Oh, hell no. She ran to throw on a two-piece bikini. I'm happy for you for you for losing your weight, but just say you were jealous of the other women who were in shape and could wear shit that you couldn't wear. Because as soon as she dropped that weight, you can't keep clothes on Aisha Curry. So I've been seeing through a lot of that nonsense too. Let's see here. <laughs> Y'all know I'm gonna keep it real, honey. Uh, Marlon Harrison says, preach T, thank you for speaking the truth. Absolutely. And thank you for joining me. Thank you for the super chat, love. I appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Wonderful wheat bread. That sounds good right now. Shit, I need a damn sandwich. I ain't ate all day. <laughs> says, there was a secret meeting in the 90s to usher in gangster rap. It was a setup to boost the industrial complex. Dr. Dre in the West Coast are, was a key component to have it happen. Thank you so much for the super chat. I definitely believe that. A lot of things are planned, you know what I'm saying, to help destroy certain communities, especially the black communities. So I definitely agree with that. So thank you so much. Um, Princess Aaliyah from NYC says, um, is it self-respect when housewives sit at home getting cheated on, beat up, etc.?" I think that was her point because she elaborated in another video. They judged her, but they don't respect themselves either. Okay, well, I'm just talking about that clip, so I don't know. I haven't watched the other video, but I mean, either way, if somebody, I mean, that's kind of apples to oranges. Somebody getting cheated on and beat it up, how is that their fault? That's the man's fault. That's not the woman's fault, you know, so I don't know. I don't know. I have to hear that. Um, let's see here. Um, Daria Lazard says, Tia bothers Suki because she knows she got a beard all to be seen. Do what you do, girl, but let the respectable women do their thing too. Love the live. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I agree. I feel like, you know, the fact that she said it and the way she said it, and, you know, they're all hoes. It was just like, well, if you're proud to be a hoe, then why are you using the same word towards respectable women? I thought you said being a hoe was a good thing. <laughs> so anyways, let's see here. Hardcore sent five dollars. She says, my problem is there's no variety when it comes to male or female rappers. I can agree with that. It's like everybody's kind of following the same, uh, you know, blueprint. But the thing is, you do have rappers out here who do rap about other stuff. I mean, you have the J. Coles, you have the Kendrick Lamars, you have Rhapsody, um, No Name. So you do have people who rap about more, you know, I would say higher vibrational stuff. But again, people have to support them, you know? So I always put stuff back on the consumer, you know, even here on YouTube. When I talk about more serious matters, when I talk about things that are affecting, oh yeah, Chica, thank you, whoever said Chica. Chica's another one, can rap her ass off. You know, again, just like when I talk about real stuff that affects us on YouTube, not just YouTube, but in the real world, them videos don't get views like that. I could be like, the sky is falling. They don't get views like that. Okay? But then if I'm talking about who's who's smashing and, and, and cheating and, and, and slutting around, oh, all the views come. I'll never forget when I went to the Million Man March. Okay? Spent all that money to go fly out there, get a hotel, spent hours filming even more hours editing and all that positive footage till this day. It's now 2020. That million man March was, I believe like in 2015, them videos don't have no more than 5,000 views. And then the very next day I put up a video about Chris Brown, hundred thousand views easily. So again, it goes back to the consumer. It's all about what you put your attention and your energy towards. So that's why there's not a whole lot of variety, but thank you for the super chat. Um, Sonia Rattleson says, Hey sis, just coming through to show some love. Happy Tuesday. Can't stay. I will catch the rest of it. Um, I was catch the rest of the content later. Much love. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you for coming through. I truly appreciate it. Um, let's see here. 
Mimi614 says, love their hair, much love from Toronto. Visit us. Thank you so much, sis. Shout out to Canada. Thank you for coming through. Um, Ashley Ophelion says, thank you for going live for my Kobe birthday. Okay, is it your birthday for my... It says Kobe's birthday. Happy birthday to you in case it's your birthday. Thank you so much for coming through and thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Yardley Moore says, you are amazing. Juicy lips. I want to kiss you. Oh, shit. <laughs> Megan, I thought black women should be protected. LOL. <laughs> y'all are mess. I ain't fooling with y'all. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, Jelly Bean sends $4.99. Thank you, Jelly Bean, for the super chat. Um, Milky Chan. I like that. Instead of Jackie Chan, Milky Chan. Says, hi, Miss Lovely T. I thought I almost missed your live stream. I love your hair and makeup. Thank you so much, sis. Thanks for coming through. Um, let's see here. Lopez Rodriguez says, shout out to all 12K watching. Please smash the like button. Thank you for the $4.99. I appreciate it. Yes, you guys, hit that like button. Y'all know I'm saying some damn truth, okay? The only ones who are mad is because the truth is irritating their damn demons. We're going to keep y'all in prayer. But yeah, smash that like button. I appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Lopez Rodriguez. So I've been out here for 50 minutes already. Damn, that hour done flew by really quick, okay? So before I go, I want to talk about... I'm sorry, Coco says, T, you missed my super chat. Coco Danielle, I'm sorry. They come and go. Um, I always try and go back and read them. So, But thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you to everybody. Sorry if I missed anybody. I missed quite a few because I want to focus on the conversation. Um, let's see here. Diane Diego, love you and sending positive vibes, friend. In my head, did you hear about Breonna Taylor's shooting was because of the Louisville Police Department operation to clear out a block in western Louisville, according to attorneys. Wow. Thank you for the super chat. I didn't know that. I'm going to have to look into that further, so thank you so much. Um, Jabril White, thank you for the $5. I appreciate it. Um, Tinka... The live started 51 minutes ago. Okay, I'm going to be on here for probably another 20 minutes. Okay, so let me see here. Um, and shout out to all my mods. Appreciate y'all in here. Uh, Taylor Williams in the comment section says, LOL, negativity sells. I definitely agree with that. Um, let's see here. The truth is good. Great. I will keep sipping my tea. Keep up the good work. Thank you, impressive. Um, Empress K, I appreciate it. So let me go ahead and show y'all this. I took my notes here. I want to talk about Lauren Hill's daughter um, before I leave. Her name is Sela. Sela. Sela Marley. Marley. Damn. Tongue tied. Sela Marley is Lauren Hill's daughter. Uh, Lauren Hill had her back in 1998. She's now 21 years old. Beautiful girl. And basically... Out of nowhere, she literally went on to Instagram live. She did a two hour live stream and spilled all the family tea. OK, and so now this has gone viral during the two hour live. She talked about how she watched her parents abusive situation. And basically, she also repeated it in her relationships, how she was promiscuous, had a lot of unprotected sex at one point in time. Um, she also talked about how her father was not in her life. He did not do right by her and her siblings. And then she went on to talk about the so-called abuse. And I want to use that lightly, um, that she faced from the hands of her mother. She loves her mother, but she felt like a lot of the whoopings and things that she got was very abusive. I also learned that Lauren Hill, most of her children, they were raised by the grandmother, so Lauren Hill wasn't really there for them as much as she should have been. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys parts of it here. So give me just a second to pull it up here. So we're going to play the one first about the Lauren Hill beating. So give me just a moment to set this up. Um. Okay, I have that up here. Okay. Well, you, you go walk to your 
doom. You walk to your death. It's like walking to your death, right? So you walk to go get the belt and the belt, the switch, this, that. You walk to go get the belt and pretty much, I'm gonna actually show you. And you know, my mother is an amazing woman, but um, she obviously didn't do everything right. So I'll show you what she would do. Hold up. She would go get the belt. So we come, it's five of us, four kids actually, it's four kids. So boom, now she has the belt. So she would hold our hands, oops. She would hold our hands like this. If I had a belt, I was, okay, boom. It would be like this, you know? She would hold our hands like this and we would just sit in circles as she beat us. It was literally just like that. Ooh, I just, I just, that actually just traumatized me. Hearing that sound, hearing that sound, yo, that sound, bro, yo, ah, oh, that sound, that sound, oh my God, that sound. And you just, they just hold your hands. What did I, mm, mm, about, mm, 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 you know what I mean? And you're just running in circles. You're like, oh, oh, oh. And you're just screaming, crying, right? And then she would be like, what would she say? And then after that, it will be fix your face. Fix your face. Fix your face. So let me go ahead. I'm going to play you the other scene concerning her father. So give me just a second here. I'm telling y'all, when that camera fell, tell me that didn't mind y'all Umar Johnson. <laughs> Mama Oye! Mama Oye! She knocked down the camera! Did y'all see that? That was Mama Oye! Mama Oye knocked down the camera! <laughs> Fucking lunatic. <laughs> when that camera fell, that reminded me of that Umar Johnson situation. I'm sorry, I'm immature. <laughs> Okay, here's the part about the father, honey. Give me just a second here. Let me pull that up. Y'all see that? Mama Oye doesn't want the truth to come out about the NBA killing Kobe. Because me and Michael got into a fight. And when we fight, it can get very volatile. And I can get very volatile. And I'll pretty much have a breakdown and I um and then I realized like how and then I had a flashback of me at 10 years old yeah about 10 years old so like 10 years ago and I saw and it was my mom my dad arguing and she was like texting him incessantly just blowing up his phone and I'm sure he wasn't responding and it clicked and I was like, wow, I'm doing exactly what my mom did. Like I'm in my relationship, I'm doing exactly what she did. And then it clicked again. And I was like, wow, where is my father? Like, where is my father? And I just came to conclusion of how much of my life I've fucked up and how much of me is fucked up simply because my dad just wasn't around, you know, because me and Michael got into a fight. Okay, y'all. So y'all heard what she had to say. Let me come back on the screen here. So the whole situation with um, Sila is sad, you know, and I think a lot of times, especially as Black people, because I know a lot of people saying, well, I got my ass whooped too, honey. I still got scars on my hands, arms, legs. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, and I've talked about this before. You know, a lot of us went through what we call, you know, whoopings, beatings. But a lot of it is very traumatic, you know. And just because we all went through the same dysfunction of being beat doesn't make it okay. And that's one thing that unfortunately we kind of, when we hear people talk about it, it's like, girl, you'll be all right. But you really don't know how those beatings really affect certain kids. It may, you know, affect certain kids worse than others. 
you know? So again, as a parent watching this, I feel really sad that she felt the need to go to Instagram and talk about all of this for two hours. You know, it's like, you can tell she was going through a lot. She had a lot of things bottled inside of her and that she wanted to get it out. And I, and I also think that she was doing this, um, it's like almost like a, a a call, you know, to her parents. You know, she wants their attention, and maybe this is the only way that she can get it. Because now that it's viral, everyone is talking about it. She's deleted the video, you know. So the whole scene is just really sad. And, yeah, you know, I think instead of people just watching and judging and just sipping tea, I think a lot of people should look at this and look at this young girl situation as one, fathers need to be in their children's lives, period. And just because you have a daughter and you feel like, well, you know, she's a girl, she's better off with her mom, you know, I'm a boy, you know, I'm a, I'm a man, so I can deal better with the boys, your daughter needs you just as much as your sons need you. This is why fathers play a very important role. And then I also got to bring it back to the women, okay? This is why we also have to be very mindful of who we choose to make the fathers of our children. Because at some point in time, I don't know where the breakdown of their relationship happened, but it probably, it happened pretty early because she's 22 and she's talking about stories of her mom insensibly texting Rohan. Is it Rohan the daddy? I'd be, honey, it's so many damn Marleys. Is it, it's her daddy, Rohan? Shit. <laughs> I know Bob is the grandpa. Is it Rohan? Y'all, let me look at somebody write in the comments. Did I say the right father's name? It's about 50 Marleys, honey. Okay, yes. Okay, good. Somebody wrote Ziggy. It ain't no damn Ziggy. Okay, good. It's Rohan. So, obviously, they've been having issues in their relationship for a while for her to remember that at 10 years old. But the dope thing that I thought is the how she held herself responsible and she realized that she's repeating that generational curse. That's the most important thing you can do is when you when you recognize an action that you're doing and you can be honest enough to say that, you know what, this action, what I'm doing is wrong. There's nothing worse than somebody doing the wrong thing over and over again and excusing it. And after a while, what do we call that? We call that insanity because you keep doing it over and over again expecting a different result. She doesn't want to go insane, so she's recognizing that she's following the same pattern as her mother. So much respect to her for recognizing that at such a young age. Back to the father thing, okay? Now, I know Lauren Hill's on a different level. She's a celebrity, but this counts for celebrities too. She had not one, but five children by Rohan Marley. Her sixth child is by somebody else. I think he's a football player, not sure. But she has six children total, but the first five were by Rohan. Now, one time did Rohan think, as much as he's getting her pregnant, because she was having babies literally at one point every two to three years, he never married her. He never once said, I want to make you my wife. But then when he left her, remember, he left her for that white woman, or maybe she's Brazilian, okay? He left her and married her within a few months. And been with her ever since. Got other babies with her and everything. So again, we all have to be mindful of who we choose to have children with. And this also goes for men. Because sometimes men go through it with these crazy ass baby mamas. You know, y'all be so stuck on she got a fat ass. She looks good on the gram. You know what I'm saying? And all she brings to the table is pussy and problems. One of my homeboys is going through that right now. You know, married a girl who's, you know, she's not on Instagram like that, but she's like, you know, Instagram model type. Very pretty, cute shape, and feels like she's too pretty to do anything else. And now they're struggling, you know. The Rona done hit. People's money ain't right. Can you get up and get a job? No. I don't want to get a job. Because he made her, he allowed her to feel accustomed to a certain lifestyle. So she feel like she ain't got to work. So again... Be very mindful. Don't just fall for, you know what I'm saying, a, a pretty face, thin waist, and a fat ass. Because <laughs> sometimes it's just coochie and problems. That's all I'm saying. So as, as adults, we have to get with people who are, easy, you know, who, who we're yoked with and who we can see with being long-term. And even if you guys end up getting divorced and breaking up, 
will that person still be a good parent in spite the fact, in spite of us not making it? And this thing ending up in divorce, will the father still be there? Will you still come get your kids every weekend? Will the mother still be there? Or is it out of sight, out of mind, I'm with my new family? That shit hurts, man. That shit really hurts. So I know what she's going through. So I feel really bad. I feel bad for her. Look, y'all laughing because I said coochie and problems, honey. Some, that's all some of these chicks bring. That's why sometimes I don't feel bad for some of these guys when they be like, oh, my baby mama crazy. And, yo, know, she, you know, she's a horrible. She don't cook. She don't clean. She don't do shit. Well, you knew it when you got with her. You wanted arm candy. So, again, you know, you got, you got to think beyond that. Like, it's cute in your 20s, but when you're in your 40s and you're trying to build something and get a home and, you know, do, you know just start a business, you want somebody like-minded. If the only person, the only, if the only thing that person can do is worry about weave and makeup and looking cute, like I said, that might be cute in your 20s, but not in your 30s and 40s. Damn, YouTube trying to kick me off. See, I'm speaking real shit. Now the stream going funny. I'm going to keep talking, though, because I got stuff to get off my damn chest. Let me read these super chats. Um, Alex Wild says, I can totally relate to being called a bitch all the time in elementary school. That was in the early 2000s. I was just a little girl then too being called by that by being called that by boys. Wow. Thank you so much for the $50 super chat. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it's the truth. You know, a lot of kids emulated what they heard on the radio and on MTV and BT. So thank you. Um, let's see here. Uh, Desiree Nicole sends 20. She says, dads play a huge role. I had to apologize to my dad for how I treated him as a teen. I didn't understand why he wasn't around until I worked at the same place. He was working 10 to 12 hour shifts and he didn't have time for us. Aww. Thank you so much for the super chat. And it's true. Like fathers definitely play a big role. And a lot of times, unfortunately, our fathers have to work. My dad was the same way. You know, he was a nurse. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that was. I don't know. People tease me about that as a kid, but it's like, OK, my dad's a nurse. So he worked a lot of hours. He was always gone as well. So I definitely can relate. And a lot of times, again, like I was saying, you don't understand the sacrifices that our parents make until we get older, until we're parents. And then we get it, you know, so parenting doesn't come with a handbook. It's not easy. I don't care who you are. Nobody is perfect as a parent. You know, you're just trying to figure it out. So I just hope that her coming out and speaking about this wakes up both Lauren Hill and Rohan, and maybe they can do better for the younger kids because she's grown now, but Rohan has smaller children. You know, so maybe what she's saying will trickle down and help her brothers and sisters. Um, so, uh, Sonia Rattleson sent 50. Oh, I'm sorry. I already read that earlier. Thank you, Sonia. Let me see here. Uh, Nyjah Peterson says, thank you for the content. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining me, Nyjah. I really appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Mimi614 sends 10. She says, true. My dad has 15 after he divorced. I told one of them he won't marry again. And they didn't believe me. Wow. Thank you so much. And that's another thing. Getting back to the whole picking your husband thing. Rohan is a Marley. Okay. Now who knows about them dang on Marleys? All of the Marley men, they're male whores. I don't give a damn. Okay. They like to, you know what I'm saying, spread their seed. Hell, Bob Marley had a whole bunch of damn kids and had them on his wife, Rita. And was even bringing his side babies for her to raise. People don't like to have that conversation. And I'm a Bob Marley fan. Love his music. But he had a lot of damn kids. Like, let's, let's keep it real. Had a bunch of kids on Miss Rita. So, again, isn't it funny how that generational curse did not break? All of the males in that family basically followed the same routine as their father. And y'all can say, oh, they're Rastafari. You're supposed to spread your seed and be, and be plentiful. Well, yeah, how about you spread your, your seed in that one woman? Now, he, already, he did spread it five times in Lauren Hill. But, you know, a lot of the Marley kids have a lot, you know, have a lot of kids by a lot of different people. It's like people hear that name Marley and the panties just come off. Oh, you're a Marley? Get me pregnant. <laughs> I don't know what it is. 
But they got a shit, all of them, they got a shit ton of kids think I'm lying. Especially in Florida, honey. I done heard stories. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Marcel Jennings says, pussy and problems. I live, but side by, I agree, 100% T, preach. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's see here. Beautiful soul sent $5. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate it. So, yeah, it, I mean, it's the truth. It's the truth. So, I see YouTube is on some goofy stuff. I've been on for an hour and 10 minutes. I see they keep trying to freeze up the stream and all this foolishness. They've kicked people off because I've dropped down to 5,000. I went from 12,000 to five. So that means it's time for me to go. I was going to speak on Mayor Lightfoot. Maybe I'll just save that. Yeah, see, everybody's writing that YouTube kicked them out. See, when you start speaking real stuff, um, what's up, Smiley? I see you in here. Um, when you start speaking real stuff, then the stream wants to act up and, and, and do all types of foolishness. So I'm going to go. I'll do a live or maybe a separate video on all the stuff that went down in Chicago. The riots, I was posting stuff on Instagram. I was getting live feeds sent to me. Oh, they showed out two nights ago. But this time they showed out in outside of the hood. So they took it out from the south side and they went to the, the Magnificent Mile, tore up the white folks area, honey. And right now they're under curfew. And there was a boy streaming, showing himself trying to rob an ATM. I mean, the shit is just, it's just ridiculous, the stuff that's going on in 2020. On top of all the fires and explosions that I posted about yesterday, that was crazy. Yesterday was Leo season in full effect. So maybe I'll touch on those um, at another time. But at this point in time, I've been on here for an hour and 11 minutes. YouTube wants me to leave, so I'm going to get ready to go. Um, let me see. Let me read these last super chats. Hardcore says he was laying it low and spreading it wide. I know that's right. That's what Miss Evelyn said about the daddy. <laughs> about uh, Tamar and Tony Braxton's daddy, Max, uh, Michael Braxton. He was laying it low and spreading it wide. But, you know, what's funny about that, though, he don't have no other kids. All his kids are by Evelyn, so he didn't spread it too far. <laughs> Um, let's see here. Uh, Xander Dumas says, let's not forget Lauren gave up her fame for her kids. Exactly. And, and you know what? And that might be, I'm glad you mentioned that that might be a part of what has her torn because sometimes when we give up stuff to be parents, some people build resentment towards that. And a lot of times with mothers and daughters, there's like this underlying, I don't know what it is like an underlying resentment towards the daughter maybe because sometimes when you look at your daughter you see like the younger version of you and especially if your daughter is technically in a better position at her age than what you were there's always like an underlying I don't want to say jealousy per se because I don't want to say that you know moms are just jealous of their daughter but it's like an underlying friction a lot with mothers and daughters and that might be why she got a brunt of it you know who knows you know and and that's a lot to give up your music career she she gave she gave up her music career at the height of her popularity. I mean, she could have went on to drop two, three more albums, won even more awards, but she walked away from the industry, you know? So maybe she low key resents that, you know, who knows? So that's a really good point. Thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Blake. Get a pish. I believe I said it right. I know you support my podcast. I always recognize your name. So thank you so much. Um, he says, T, you're right. Beatings are different for everyone. I shouldn't have judged. Thank you for being the agent of truth. You are so welcome, sweetie. I definitely appreciate it. And yeah, you know, we all have gone through that traumatic experience of being hit and whooped. But some kids, it really does take a toll on them. It really does affect them. You know, like even for me, it's like, I can probably remember maybe a handful of times that I've ever even had to put my hands on my kids or, you know, pop them for, you know, just just doing stupid stuff, being disrespectful, fighting, you know, things like that. But I always remember, like, never to take it to the extent where my parents took it with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, never hitting them with fucking hangers and curling irons and just all types of crazy stuff. And we'll look at that like, oh, it's just the whooping or your parents are African or your parents are from the Caribbean. That's just what they do. No, that's how you beat a slave, you know, and, and we and we normalize that. And it's not OK, because I've talked to many friends, especially white friends. They'd be like, no, I don't remember getting any whoopings. We just sat in the corner. 
You know, and it's like, oh, shit, must be nice. We didn't get no corner days in our house, honey. You know, that's just being real. I ain't the only one. Don't judge me. A lot of y'all got you. Thank you, uh, Amar. Belt buckles. Uh, People got extension cords. Thank you. I ain't shit. Y'all don't judge me in my household, damn it. All y'all's parents, not all y'all. But I'm sure a lot of y'all got whipped with some strange shit. <laughs> okay? Shoes, sandals, whatever they could grab. Wooden spoons. Come on now. Don't front. All that shit wasn't cool. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, going through it, it's like, I never wanted to implement that on my children. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't think that anybody should have scars on their body for a mistake. Because that's what kids do. That's what teenagers do. They messed up. You know, they make mistakes, you know. And it's like, if, you, if you're not going to beat the, the person up the street like that, why do it to your own child? So, yeah, those, those whippings, you know, yeah, they can affect us. They can affect us. Yeah, our gen- look, somebody wrote our generation went through it. They really did, honey. Look, folks are having flashbacks. Look, Carla said T's giving me flashbacks. Somebody said um, they got uh, two skillets thrown at them. Somebody got hit with a damn two by four. Damn. Yeah. Our generation hairbrushes. I'm telling you because when we were growing up, it was normal. You know, they were seeing like, you know, you're supposed to beat your kids. It was normal when we were growing up. Nobody judged any parents. That's why I said, these kids, they got it easy. Y'all got CPS and y'all can just call, hey, my mom cussed me out. You know what I'm saying? They'll come with the police and all types of shit. We could have, you know, there was no number for us to call. Shit, pick up that phone if you want to. You be wearing that damn phone cord around your neck. You know, so yeah, y'all generation got a little bit easier because y'all can kind of, you know, express y'all selves. Like these these parents, they got to watch it now because you say some shit to these kids, they're going to blast you on TikTok. Like the girl with the racist parents told all her family's tea. You know, so yeah, you can't beat them kids like that no more. Not at all. Look, a few people say they have to go out and go pick their own switch. Yeah. Somebody got hit with a fly swatter. Damn. Back scratchers. Yeah, it was all abuse. But again, because we've, we've, we've normalized it. So we laugh about it because, you know, as black people, we laugh at our pain. That's how we get through life. We can't go around being sad all the damn time. Sometimes you, you got to laugh at your pain, you know. But yeah, when it all boils down to it, it was all abuse, you know. So, so let's not be dismissive and say, oh, it's just a whooping. Get over it. Somebody grabbing your arm, making you hold your arm straight up in the air and, and whipping you like that. Nah, that's very abusive. But again, I'm sure Lauren was beat the same way by her mother and her mother was beat the same way by her grandmother. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a generational thing. And if you don't know no better, you're not going to do better. So at least now we can have these conversations. So people who may not have children yet who run across the stream can say, wow, well, I'm never going to beat my kids like that. Now you will whoop your kids. I hear people like, I'll never, you know, we all say that shit. When I have kids, I'm never going to whoop my kids. Honey, we said that. I remember my friends, we all had our babies. Um, they're so sweet and cute. We're never going to whoop our kids the way our parents whooped us. You know, and, and yeah, we don't hit them like the way our parents hit us. But you're definitely going to have to discipline your kids every now and then. But there's definitely a limit. You know what I'm saying? And, let, and also, let's not forget, even if you don't lay hands on your kids, I think for me, some of the worst scars are emotional. You know, like the, the scars on, you know, on the body and shit. I mean, you could kind of see some, but they, they eventually fade with, sh- with cocoa butter and shea butter, okay? Cocoa butter helped fade them nicely. But those emotional scars, there's no cocoa butter or shea butter that can ever get rid of some of the shit I was told as a kid. So watch your words. Watch how you treat your children, okay? Because they're the ones who are going to change your diapers when you get old. <laughs> so treat them right. <laughs> and on that note, you guys... Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everybody who came through today to join me. I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. I definitely enjoyed, you know, the conversation, the dialogue, the chat is popping, honey. Um, Thank you, guys, everybody who sent the super chat. I apologize if I missed your super chat. I really appreciate it. So once again, you guys, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you guys again in a few days, okay? Have a good evening, you guys.